Good afternoon, and welcome for joining us in Community Matters here on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm Ethan Allen, uh, filling in as host for Jay Fidel, who cannot be here today. And with us today on Community Matters, we have a whole team of people, actually we have several teams of people, from Kalani High School. We have Brian, we have Vance, and we have Carmen here. Welcome. Thank you. Thank for having you. us. Oh, hey, it's great, great to be here. These guys are doing exciting stuff with robotics. I think you've won competitions, and you're gearing up for another competition, if I understand it. And you've got all, all, all sorts of good stuff going on. So why don't, why don't maybe one of you start uh, telling us a little bit about the overall view of the program. About the program of FIRST or our program? Your, your program. Okay, so yeah. um, our program, it started in 2009 with five boys and one mentor, Mr. Silver, and he made that possible with them, and they started from the ground up, and now we're here maybe, was it 10, 10 years, nine years? Nine years. Nine years. Nine years later, and we're thriving as a team and hoping to do a lot better, a lot more later on. Great, great. Uh, so you, you must be dedicated as if you spent nine years <laughs> cultivating the, the sport of robotics or the sports, I guess, of robotics. I'm dedicated because students are dedicated. If okay. the students weren't willing to work as hard as they do in doing everything they do, I wouldn't be doing what I do. Okay. So it's cyclical. It goes around. Okay. I give to them, they give back to me, and together they've done incredible things. I can't be more proud of this team and watching it develop over the last nine years. Excellent. Seeing kids come from freshmen. All right. All the way to their senior years, going to college, be graduate students in college, get into um, careers after college, and that we're now seeing that first group make it to that level. Excellent, yeah. super. So, Carmen, what, what got you interested in robotics? Um, well, in elementary, I was never actually introduced to robotics. So, mm -hmm. when I found out there's a robotics team at Kalani, mm -hmm. I got interested in it and participated in it. So, that way, I could maybe help spread the word of STEAM, mm -hmm. science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics, okay. to other elementary schools, which is an experience I never got to do. Excellent. Oh, that's great. That's it goes around and comes around, right? Exactly. Oh, excellent. Super. And it's, uh, you mentioned the, the FIRST competition. Yes. Is that a spinoff of the, what used to be the U.S. FIRST? Uh, Dean Kamen started Oh, it's the same thing. Yeah, many so, years ago. I had met Dean Kamen yeah. when he was just okay. getting that up, up and going. That's... And so tell our audience a little bit about the, the first competition. So the first competition, so the main competition that we do is our big robots, about 120 pound robots, five feet tall, and though, that's called FRC, First Robotics Competition. Okay. And we have six weeks starting in January to build a robot and to compete. Our team goes to one outside regional outside of the state and then here in Hawaii. And if, we're, if we work hard enough to win an award, we go to the World Championships and this year it's in Houston. Uh-huh, excellent. And so each year, as I understand it, on, the, on that competition, at, when you get your stuff in January, you get a, a kit of materials, and you're mm -hmm. sort of told your robot must do X, Y, and Z, must mm -hmm. stick a basketball into a hoop or something like that. Uh, and beyond that, you're sort of free to do what, what you can do with the stuff in the kit, right? Yes. And that's got, got to involve <laughs> elaborate planning, a lot of creativity. Yeah. So the first two weeks, it's a lot of CADing, which is computer-aided design. Okay. And we draw out our robot onto the computer. Or first, we draw it onto like paper and stuff. And then once we have the ideas that we want to implement, we put them into the computer. And then um, after we do that, we finish. We start cutting the parts, making it, welding it together. And then the last couple of weeks, it's finishing it up. Um, stuff putting on the wheels, putting on all the shafts, making sure all the motors work, mm -hmm. putting all the electrical and programming. And then it gets bagged up, and then it gets shipped to our first competition. Oh, okay, great. And do, do you have uh, uh, any of your photos or anything uh, relate to the first competition, or is this um, all? There's a couple photos of us um, working on the robot. Okay. So this is a picture of the electrical of the robot. Ooh. So that's maybe in the fifth week, that's what we work on. Okay to put on the robot. And what's really cool about that shot too is the students designed it so it was a hatch cover. A lot of teams put the electronics underneath the robot, mm -hmm. make it extremely difficult to get to if there's ever a problem. Mm -hmm. They were able to design it so it would come open uh -huh. so they'd have easy access to it and then it would fold back up into the robot to be safe and secure for game play. Oh, excellent, yeah, very, very good. See, this is why people have to think creatively, right? Mm -hmm. You don't just go with the design that everyone else has gone with. <coughs> and, uh, so how, how, how many times have you done the first now? Um, so 
have we been doing it all 10 years? 10 years, right? We, we've done first for nine years oh, now. Nine we've years. played in Hawaii for those last nine years. Okay. Uh, this will be our ninth time in the Hawaii Regional. Hawaii Regional is its 10th anniversary this year. Uh -huh. okay. So that's really incredible. We're proud to be excited oh. with it, to be right yeah. with the very beginning. Yeah. And we've on, gone to outside regionals. We've done six outside regionals. Cool. And we've been to Worlds all eight years wow. of our program. Right. Congratulations. So, and then this year, we'll, we're going back. Oh, yeah. well, wow, you guys must, must be good at what you do then. Carmen, do you want to explain how we won the award to get there? Um, so the award that we won was the Engineering Inspiration Award. The judges believed that through our chairman's presentation, we managed to inspire them on how engineering is a big part of our community and it can also help us in the future. Absolutely. So it's not about just building a robot. Right. It's about building your community, your right. school, right. and affecting the students and where they go for their future. Yeah, well, that's what we, what we were, before the show, talking about, right, is the, the many ways that automated systems now, call them robots, if you will, are helping. They're doing more and more of the routine stuff. And it's, it's having profound effects on our communities. It's changing our whole workforce, the way people think about the jobs, because many of the jobs that your parents or grandparents did just, uh, you know, a robot can do them faster, better, cheaper now, right? Mm -hmm. and, the, and the jobs you'll do tomorrow aren't invented yet, you know? Yep. <laughs> We're hoping to invent a few of those ourselves. Excellent. Good job. Good job. No, that's that's the, the beauty of this is you get more experience in the, in the coding, in the building of these things, and understanding the constraints and the powers. You'll be able to think more and better ways to, to get tasks done that now seem sort of impossible. I mean, maybe you can get a robot that can go along on the beach, pick up cigarette butts, you know, and get rid of all the mm -hmm. cigarette butts that litter the beach, which is a real, you know, I mean, it's not a huge thing, but it's a big issue. People mm -hmm. don't like it. But you can't ask a person to do that. I mean, that would be mind-boggling, right? But a robot could do it just endlessly, right? Crawl yes. along the beach. If it could select cigarette butts. So well, we're hoping to get to a future where right. there are going to be no cigarette well, butts well, because yeah. no one will want to smoke. Well, that's a, it, yes. it's <laughs> the ideal. But so we'll start it at the beginning <laughs> before we have to get to the root problem of the trash. <laughs> Ah, that's that's always always better to cut the problems off before they get started. <laughs> I agree entirely. But so there, so um, where where do you guys want to? What are your dreams about taking robots to to? Uh, personally, to, I want to do computer hardware engineering. So okay. that's um, building computers and making new computers do making making them do better things. Mm -hmm. So back then, when the computers were the size of a room, and then they compressed it to so it could fit on a table, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So you want to keep shrinking stuff down and getting yeah. it better and better, yeah. Um, I want to become an architect when I grow up. Oh, okay. And if there were robots in the future, it could maybe help with planning, making blueprints sure. better, and checking like the foundation. Right. So wait, maybe we show the video at this point? Yeah, so maybe I can explain a little bit sure. about the video. So the video is a... Um, is a summary of the year. It qualifies us for the Chairman's Award, which we unfortunately didn't win in South Carolina, but we hope to win in Hawaii. So it explains what we did this past year and what we did throughout our whole history as a team. Cool. Team Magma strives to involve the community in science, technology, engineering, arts, and math, also known as STEAM, through hosted tournaments, demonstrations, and outreach events. Our team members and alumni have volunteered at FLL tournaments as judges, MCs, and scorers. Our team also ran an innovation fair at FLL State Tournament, including math, science, and life-size board games to spark interest in STEAM. This year, we have done eight robot demos exposing over 500 people to STEAM. At robot demos, we bring robots to various places such as schools and community centers. We demonstrate what we build and let everyone from our community learn about our program. We do this to hopefully inspire the next generation to engage in STEAM. This past year, we have held eight week-long camps totaling over 100 students from grades kindergarten to eighth grade. This is our second year of running the GTech program, and we have obtained two grants worth $5,000 total for the two upcoming programs this summer, providing more than 20 hours of programming to 32 elementary and middle school students. We send out our Bristlebots all around the world to help inspire the next generation. Over the past eight years, we've inspired over 10,000 individuals and 20 different schools. Many of those individuals have gone on to join robotics teams just like ours. This year we have taught six classes over three weeks, teaching 20 to 30 kids per class in military bases on the island of Oahu. 
These classes are offered at a discounted price to allow military children to have opportunities in STEAM education. The Mobile Makerspace is our initiative to spread and inspire students to become involved in STEAM. This mobile space is fully equipped with 3D printers, laser engravers, and more. The idea for this is to take it anywhere on the island, giving access to tools and knowledge to FRC teams and aspiring makers alike. This year, we held four week-long classes, teaching numerous middle school students the many applications of STEAM. Our products are student designed and made using a laser engraver and CNC's. These products introduce the public to applications of laser cutters and bring attention to the diversity and impact that robotics makes on the students. Dear Mr. Silver and Team Magma, thank you for coming to Kahala Elementary to show us your robotics themes. When you guys presented your robots in the first 30 seconds, I was already amazed. When I go to Kalani High School, I'm totally going to join Team Magma. Sincerely, Jake. My time on the robotics team has taught me what I want to do in my life, and I discovered my passion in mechanical engineering. My favorite part about being a mentor is getting to work with students, showing them the opportunities for them to be successful, watching them struggle, and then figuring out in that aha moment of, I got it, I made it, it worked. That's the cool part about being a mentor. That was, that was amazing. You guys do great stuff. You, so you, you take this program into schools, into like elementary schools, like you were saying earlier? Um, so we do this through our academies. Okay. For example, we have our Makers Academy, which involves the Makemobile. The great thing about the Makemobile is that it's off the grid, so we could take it anywhere on the island and uh -huh. give students and teachers an opportunity to l get an experience with STEAM machinery. Excellent, excellent, super. And I thought you wanted something a little more about the chairman's video? Yes, so the chairman's award oh, chairman's is award, an sorry. award that is given out to a team that embodies um, an example other teams can follow. It's the most prestigious uh -huh. award in FIRST. And that's that video, I can see why that yes. generated that for you mm -hmm. guys, because you're clearly doing good stuff on your own, but then you're also sharing it out widely and, and inspiring others to follow in your tracks and surpass you even, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> that's mark of any great teacher is right. how their students surpass themselves. That, that, that's right. That's right. You just just uh, help a little support, get some barriers out of the way, and let them go. Right? Yeah. So we are going to take a quick break here, and uh, we're a team. The team from uh, Brian, Vance, and Carmen from uh, Kalani High School robotics team have been here, and we're going to take a break and be back with some new guests. Hi. I'm Cheryl Crozier Garcia, the host of Working Together on Think Tech Hawaii. Join us every other Tuesday from 4 p.m. to 4.30 when we discuss the impact of change on employees, employers, and the economy. Aloha. My name is Reg Baker, and I'm the host of Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We broadcast live every Thursday at 2 o'clock. We highlight businesses and individuals that are successful in Hawaii, and we learn their secrets to their success. I hope you can join us and listen in because we always have a pack of information on successful stories in Hawaii. Aloha. Aloha! How you doing there, lassies and laddies? This is Angus McTech here on Think Tech Hawaii, and I'm my favorite show. Hibachi Talk with my good old buddies, Gordo the Texada and Andrew the Security Guy. Please join us every Monday. No, it's Friday. Every Friday from 1 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. here on Think Tech Hawaii. And you can also find us on YouTube, Hibachi Talk. Aloha! I've got the Beagle Sisters here with a healthy tip. We encourage you to enjoy the food you eat this holiday season and keep it local and healthy. Yeah. Eat the rainbow, eat yeah. the rainbow, and if you need any produce, come to the Red Barn on the North Shore. Aloha, everybody. My name is Mark Shklov. I'd like you to join me for my program, Law Across the Sea, on thinktechhawaii.com. Aloha. Looking to energize your Friday afternoon? Tune in to Stand the Energy Man at 12 noon. Aloha Friday, here on Think Tech Hawaii. And we're back here in 
Community Matters on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm Ethan Allen, filling in for Jay Fidel. And with me today is a team from uh, Kalani High Schools. Uh, Brian was here earlier, and we have two new students, and I'm sorry I didn't get your names. Uh, hi, I'm Noah Ekfo. No Noah? I'm Roby Porter. Uh, Roby, glad, glad you both were able to join us here. And so we were talking before about some of the amazing things that, that your, your team has done, the comp first competition and all that kind of good stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, I gather you know other aspects of the program, right? Yeah, I am actually our treasurer for our team. Uh -huh. So I deal kind of more with the business side of things. Okay. Very important to know, very important to know. You can't, can't run uh, businesses without, without a treasurer, right? <laughs> So how do you, well, the, no, that's a good question. How do you, I mean, these are not cheap things to do. The robots themselves cost money. If you're trying to go off to these competitions, you have to pay for transportation. How, how do you organize all that? Um, so basically, you spend about $80,000 a year, which is a large sum of money. Yeah. A lot of it does go for its trips and a lot of materials for our, uh, I guess, um, to build our robot, robots and things like that. So every year, we start off with a budget saying what we're going to do for... I guess how it's the money is going to be split out mm -hmm. with the money we gained from last year, how much we're projected from our three businesses. Mm -hmm. We actually have, um, like Carmen said earlier, we have Kalani Robotics Academy, mm -hmm. which is a major fundraiser for us. We have Bristol what Bots. What is the academy? Oh, this is a, a kindergarten to eighth grade academy mm -hmm. that um, it's a week long, normally over the summer or fall breaks. Uh -huh. So you, right, yes. you guys work with kids then from K-8, basically? Yeah. Okay, cool. We teach yeah. them the instructors, and they run four different camps oh, okay. simultaneously so during the, that week time. The schools then pay you guys to, to do this. So this is, uh, you raise some funds that way. Cool. Yeah. Excellent. Oh, some, yeah. oh, sorry. Some other businesses that we've created over the years is one that we're really proud of, which is uh, Bristlebots LLC, okay. which is a small micro-robot, which started off uh, with us cutting off the heads of toothbrushes and strapping cell phone vibrators to those. But we've since then reached out to different companies in China so that we can uh, manufacture our very own parts. And we're currently in the sixth generation where uh -huh. they're able to be more widely used to a wider age range. We usually aim for it to be in elementary school and mm -hmm. we're hoping to be able to reach it out further. Hmm. And, and so these bristle bots, for, for our viewers who may not know, uh, what, what do they do? So basically what they do is there's bristles on the bottom, right. like a bristle bot, and then it has a cell phone vibrator on it so that the, as the cell phone vibrator spins, the bristles kind of vibrate and then it moves around on its oh, own. Okay, okay. We use them to go to elementary schools and hold demonstrations there where those kids get a very good initial stepping point to get interested in science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. Sure. I myself was one that was captivated by these little robots, uh -huh. and I was I just kept going. I was like, I gotta do this. It's so <laughs> fun. And now I'm here uh -huh. on the robotics team that inspired me in the first place. Excellent. Excellent. So eight years ago, we developed this product, and wow. Noah was in one of the schools. We had several of our other students uh -huh. that are now team members Excellent. that were participants in the parent and student nights in this. Wonderful. And what's really cool about it is the kids use their stuff they learned in school, the caddying and engineering class. They use the caddying to actually develop everything about it. So all the artwork here is all CAD. Uh -huh. uh, this is shipped into one manufacturer to produce the bag. Another manufacturer gets the toothbrush mm -hmm. and what that's going to look like, how wide, how long it's going to be, everything is catted out. So just like any other manufacturing process that would be done in a normal corporation, mm -hmm. these high school students are doing it. Right. And then you have to figure out how to coordinate all that and get the right parts together and the right numbers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you all the assembly right. and um, sending it out from here. Yeah. yeah, excellent, excellent. And then you've got another product here too. Yeah, actually, this is one of our newer ones. We call it Magma Crafts. We have a, we're lucky enough to have a laser printer, uh -huh. which we are able to utilize with different programs. And we actually designed this. And as you see, this one is our B. We um, turn it. Oh yes, it's huh? two sided. Cool. So we originally just had the pieces out by itself, but then we realized with this, it it just has a cleaner look as well as it's just easier to put together. Sure, sure. And I see it. Well, so those mm -hmm. come apart and you yeah. build puzzles. You can build yeah, it. Right, right. This is actually the picture of what uh -huh. it looked like. Cool. Excellent. Excellent. Very neat. Very neat. So, uh, and then again, you sell these and yes. raise money for your hub. Yeah. Wow. This is, this really is, I mean, it is a business. <laughs> it you know? is. And, yeah. and that's great. That's, this is really, 
you're really preparing yourselves and it's more than just, you know, turn to page 45 in your textbook and do the list of problems, right? Which is how, unfortunately, too much of school is taught, right? Yeah. This is much more real world stuff. It's like, uh oh, we've been spending a little too much on this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how, how are we going to get the funds to go off on our next uh, first competition, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think uh, my favorite thing about being on the robotics team is being able to use what I've learned in school instead of just having it as like useless knowledge that like oh I learned how to do geometry I learned how to find all three sides of a triangle I actually get to like use that and use those equations and put it into effect and figure out the answers to the problems that they give us sure yeah exactly how, how, how do you make X number of products using the least amount of material how do you, mm -hmm. how do you yeah. cut it you know it's a ge classic geometry problem right <laughs> yeah exactly uh, and then, of course, the whole business aspect, who, who can produce that for you, mm -hmm. at what cost, at what time frame, you know, how reliably, right? And, mm -hmm. and you, you begin to learn all about sort of statistics and probability <laughs> in terms of what kinds of tolerances you need, because your laser cutter has yeah. to cut within very, you know, very, very limited, uh, yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. And so uh, when, when is your next competition coming up? Our next competition is coming up from March 31st to April 1st at the Stan Sheriff Center. Ah, okay. It's the 10th annual Hawaii Regional, as we've said before, okay. and it's showcasing the FIRST Robotics 2017 competition game, FIRST Steamworks. First Steamworks. And what that is, is it's like a, it's a steampunk-themed game where we, there's an airship on the field, and there are actual people inside the airship for the first time ever in any first robotics competition. Uh -huh. <laughs> and the robots have to deliver these uh, gears that are about 12 inches wide and they're circular, like gears. And um, the robots deliver them to a peg, which the pilot inside the airship then pulls up and then grabs the gear and sticks it on a stick where they rotate it to spin rotors to get the airship prepared for flight. It's really, it's uh -huh. really hard to put into words kind of how complicated it oh, is. No, no. I can see a lot of, a lot of moving parts as it were, you know. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's great. Because so we're really hoping a lot of people come out to the stand sheriff right. in order to witness and watch this. Saturday right. is going to be a great day. We're going to see a lot it, of the It game should action. be a lot, a lot of fun because if multiple robots are trying to get to this peg at the same time, you have to be able to either cooperate or yeah. compete for it, right? <laughs> First Robotics is all about teamwork and right. being able to work with, the, with brand new people. It's like you or set in an alliance with two other teams, you may not know anyone on the other team. You get to know each other pretty quickly to discuss strategy, mm -hmm. discuss, discuss what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. Oh, I, I see. So it, oh, it's got both elements of cooperation and <laughs> competition. Yeah. Oh, that's, not, that's great designing on their part. That's, that's very exciting. So, uh, and what are your chances? <laughs> <laughs> well, judge, uh, we've been, I, I personally have been watching a lot of the live streams of the competitions leading up to the one we're going to be at. And we went to a first week competition. So we were kind of the testing phase where they mm -hmm. initiated a lot of new stuff. And I'm thinking that we have a pretty good chance because we have uh, two things that can do thing, the things it's supposed to very efficiently and quickly. Okay. So what we're aiming to do is climb up a rope. So it's just a free, a free suspended rope, and our robot has to grab onto it and climb up it mm -hmm. in the last 30 seconds of a match. Wow. And we can do that in about six seconds wow. okay. from bottom to top. Huh. Oh, wow. I should uh, have to, to get your <laughs> robot against my little cockatoos. <laughs> <laughs> They, they, they need your robots, but <laughs> <laughs> well, this, this is great. This is great. I mean, and I, again, I can see it involves all these different aspects of, of learning and thinking about design work, thinking about uh, mathematics underlying materials, points of view, uh, physics, physical science, right? Yeah. As well as the soft skills of learning to work as a team and, and cooperating, breaking up your tasks in, into the, the subcategories and all that you need to need to do. So again, this is this is. I mean, kudos to you. This is this is great preparation for the, the sort of the world of work. You know, what you have to do in work is you're working with people, you're sort of competing with other people, but you've got to know when you can sit down. You've got to be able to rely on your partners and friends to do their part of the business because your part may depend on theirs or vice versa. You know, yeah, excellent. And you know, gets into art, 
which I like. That's the other thing that steam, yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah, yeah. It used to be just STEM, right. science, technology, right. engineering, mathematics. Right. And then we add the art in because right. we think it's good for them right. to be able to express creativity right. through their engineering and not just, oh, right. you build a box. Right. No, you build a box and it's all pretty. Right. It's got lights on it. It's got <laughs> wings. Exactly. It's crazy. And so you're also learning the, the social sciences. <laughs> that could be steams. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Next all, step. All, all, all the acronyms <laughs> drive you crazy in education these days. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, th this is super. So real quick before we re wrap up, what advice do you have for younger students coming in to, to, who might want to get excited or want to get, get involved in this? I feel like um, just for younger students, just be open to doing whatever because I didn't, coming in, I had no clue what I was going to be doing on this team. I didn't know much about anything. But just being, um, being open to willing to try, mm -hmm. you can learn a lot, I think. Good. The kind of words I live by is... You miss every. You miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. So I myself, I've I've been all over the place doing like PR stuff, doing electrical stuff, mechanical stuff, and design stuff, and just trying new things and seeing what you want to do. It's something that I can really encourage because you're never going to know unless you try. Yeah, yeah. And just like failure is just like hey, a part of life. You yeah. Know, you fail at things, and then you do do more, and you learn from your failure, and you. I want to do something a little better. You know? The people that just succeed all the time don't really have that, that <laughs> feeling of, ah, oh, dang it, oh. but I got to do this better. Right, no, I may not be very resilient. <laughs> you know? I mean, resilience is, a, is a, key, a key capacity in this day and age. Hey, it's been, it's been a wonderful to, to have you guys here. This has been a very exciting uh, show. So wh when's, the, when's the competition and where? March 31st, April 1st, at the Stan Sheriff. Okay. It's free to enter, no cost there. Parking is still UH, so you got to pay the UH guys. Okay. Uh, 9 o'clock to 4 o'clock, basically, will be the time frame that the robots will be in action. Cool. We recommend that people wear closed-toed shoes, okay. and you can go around and walk the pit area where all the teams are. We'll have 37 teams wow. here in Hawaii uh -huh. from Australia, Taiwan, China, Japan, from the mainland U.S., and then our, our local teams here, Oahu, Big Island, Molokai, oh. Maui, Kauai. Oh. will all be represented out there. So it's really awesome to see all this international teams get together and play. Cool. We should uh, have to see if I can get Jay to send a <laughs> think tech crew out to video. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. No, it's amazing. Great. Anybody should come. Say, just stop by, say hi, you know, it's whatever. All right. Hey, well, thank you all. This was, this was great fun. Uh, this wraps it up for Community Matters here. Uh, I'm your host, Ethan Allen. Uh, aloha.